two, one, go. Hi, everyone. Super, super Hello. excited to host Eva. If you haven't watched her Instagram reels about her final project, like first, like go check it out because she has done some amazing work uh, in her final design uh, morph in Master Studios. And it was so inspired. And even the jury were so, uh, gave so much good feedback that I thought I should host Eva on my show and share the process with everyone. So thanks a lot for first giving your time and like uh, sharing all the work you're doing with us. So we get to know some insights about your your work. Hi, Mayur, it's like uh, an honor and pleasure to have you. I mean, on this stage and like share my project with you guys. But if you haven't seen my reel, then wait for the entire presentation to end. Don't just hop on my Instagram. I'll not share my handle. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was like a nine uh, months of a roller coaster ride, designing the process and like then bringing out into a um, uh, perspective of cinema and narrative is like, what I had a huge inspiration. So this entire presentation is about this process. So yeah. Yeah. And I'll, I'll keep the first part uh, very formal to you guys, like uh, sharing up and opening up the presentation, the ideas and the concept behind. And the second is very informal, sharing the tips and insights behind the scenes and the process to how, I mean, like I'm no expert, but I could share the best uh, uh, critiques to set up the project or the narrative so that's like my personal um, uh, journey there so yeah very excited to share this once yeah. again thank you for hosting me my pleasure so yeah. without much ado let's jump into yeah. the technical part <laughs> done 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 so if you're ready for the show let's let's, let's do it Okay, see there. Yep. Can, yep. Full screen. screen. Yep. Okay. So, hello. Good morning, everyone. For me, it's 9 a.m., so it's morning, but evening to you all. I'm excited to share my master's thesis project, which is Molten Memories, and share my insights and the behind the scenes of how I took inspiration for, from futuristic, dystopian, and cyberpunk uh, science fiction and brought cinematography in my project. Intangible realities. Tangible reality, tangible reality plays a big role in cinema. Best of one cannot ignore the fascination of intangible realities that serves as a fuel for directors, screenwriters, designers, and even architects uh, nowadays as like uh, to create a new immersive and interactive narrative for this film. What was needed earlier as a three-dimension scale model is replaced by digital architecture models in the film industry. The huge inspiration for my project was this blockbuster movie, Ghost in the Shell. If you haven't watched it, then must watch. The film's architecture is a mix of dusty steroid pump brutalism by day and brain-drenched neon by night was inspired by the real life spaces in Tokyo and Hong Kong. Personally, my huge inspiration is from Tokyo and how that dystopian architecture is influenced in the modern day today activities there. So narrative does not focus on the buildings or city, but it is constructions and um, urban settings across the galaxies that can provide inspiration for architecture spaces. So it's not just about the narrative that is around the building or the city, but the entire environment around it. So environment creation is the very core art of these narratives. So without much ado, let's introduce my project here, Molten Memories. Uh, this was a, a huge inspiration on how memories uh, inflict our life and how it changes uh, our day-to-day -day activities. Molten Memories talks about how memories shape us and the environment we live in. Using technologies like machine learning and feeding the AI stored in the neural link, we will be able to store, transfer, and modify the memories uh, in the three-dimensional interactive and immersive environment. We are using the modern day techniques that could be enhanced, that could be used to enhance the central nervous systems of the human beings as a cyborg. 
There are two main concepts that will shape this new world. The first one is the molten salt nuclear energy that we will call element 90 and serves as the powerhouse of this entire system. The second part is the concept of memories as data to provide insight knowledge state from the brain senses. So with much uh, ado, let's go to the cyborg that is the new future of this molten memories world. Turan is the human machine of the future. It's composed of two layers, the tau mechanic body and the RAM garment. This new body enhances the central nervous system and develops the body with an extraordinary complex machine, keeping the brain as the processor of memories and connecting the mechanical sensors in both the layers. Tor layer, it replaces the human body with a machine body only providing a safe environment for the central nervous system and enhancing the memory generation and manipulation. The merge of the human with the machine will allow us to consume less resources from our world. The tall mechanical body is composed of the mechanical organs. The nuclear heart reactor kidney, sorry, the nuclear reactor heart that serves as a container of energy. The second organ, is the mechanical kidneys that will filter the energy from any part of this. Last is the mechanism of spine, this one of the vertebrae. The main function of them is to act as a port of connection to transfer to the RAM layer. Coming down to the main layer, the RAM layer. The second layer is called RAM, which stands for rendering all memories. The two primary elements of RAM are brain and spine. The external brain is composed of two layers that collects data first from different locations of the body that are vital for memory and emotion generation. Second part is the external spinal cord that acts as a backup system for the external brain. Now let's go to the process of this memory manipulation. The human body is layered and connected with different transfer tubes that collects the neurons responding to the various stimuli of memory on the different parts of the body. First part is an EEG channel headwear that records this data coming from different parts of the body. The second layer is the functional part of the brain that translates the reading to a generative script by an artificial neural network. The second part of the processes is the spinal cord, which is simulating structures of the memories and is called the processing unit of the entire system. Finally, these generations create a unique and immersive interactive variation of what we perceive as realities. With a new body of Toram, there will be an alteration on social behaviors that will result in the influence of architecture theories and design. The corpuscle is named BIM, which stands for Bionic Immersive Machine. First BIM is called the BIM Water 605. This unit will be floating in the coast of Tokyo. The architecture program of this unit is focused on the labs to transfer human bodies to a new cyborg Toram body. These labs are the research space for the Toram cyborgs to be collaborated and improve the memory exchange mechanism. The visual shows the inside of the lab. Just like a process, the second BIM, that is the Tokyo P501, is constructed around the idea of data collection and juxtaposition of memories. We are giving corpuscle a way to be conscious and use this, that consciousness to manipulate the memories resulting in a symbiotic relationship with the cyborg. The corpuscle is mainly divided into three parts, the living area, the lab area, and the zen area. The lab area is the part where humans can remove their RAM layer to recharge and check if it needs any repairs. The living area of the module has all the functionality of a normal housing unit as well as it provides the user a personal space for the interactive memories. BIM is finally set in an immersive environment of Tokyo where it interacts and juxtaposes memories with its surroundings. The amalgamation project is called DNA, that is Data Network Aggregation, which aims to collect the data from the neighborhood purposes. The skyline of the city Tokyo dominates the immersive nature of the project. 
The urban complexity of the site incorporates hyperconnectivity and urban densification. We place our DNA tiles across the city, which acts as the anchor point for the aggregation. The design consists of a kit of parts, which acts as a catalog for the aggregation of both residential and public amalgamations. For the residential aggregation, we achieve it in three steps. Firstly, placing the DNA tiles as the anchor points. Second, achieving residential clusters around these tiles. Finally, connecting these aggregation layers with the secondary clusters of public spaces. Residential towers are a hybrid of low, mid, and high-rise buildings that connect with each other via bridges, tunnels, and walkways around, allowing the pockets for public spaces. That's how the residential society looks like. Coming to the public amalgamation, the second aggregation is the memory plaza, which takes place around the residential towers. Memory Plaza is a shared community between two neighborhoods, which allow for data collection and pockets for public spaces. The elements grow around the residential aggregations using, using design catalogs that support an immersive experiences, such as billboards, vending machines, arcades, gaming zones, which also extends at public spaces. Moving further with these aggregation rules and ideas, we imagine a detailed digital immersive neighborhood where the collected data acts as a pigment of memories. We continue further to the networks where we continue the language of our previous developments in the chapter chemises. The design is created with a set of algorithmic densities based on the existing city data, such as buildings, roads, and the urban grid. It is achieved in the different steps. The first one, the clusters are aggregated across the city where data collection tasks, the DNA task, acts as an anchor point. Second, a generative simulation is achieved to connect the clusters in the private network. Thirdly, stops for both public and private networks are placed, keeping in mind the generated network system. And last, after placing the public stops, we generate a system of train networks for the public vehicles. For generating the private network system for the city, the algorithmic data are set to vector normals of attributes to each point using existing clusters as well as manually fed direction. This data becomes the hybrid with the existing city layout. Here's a catalog of some generated networks between the shared clusters. An overview image of the networks with parking and aggregation clusters around the neighborhood. Vehicles follow the hybrid nature of transit and inspired by the idea of kit of parts. Spaceships are used as a public transit, which is capable of carrying 20 people at a time. It is also used as a cargo transport. They can halt at different strategic points placed all over the city. Motor is an underwater submarine that carries passengers to and from the nuclear, nuclear station an interior view of the motor as seen from the underwater. And the last vehicle is the private vehicle, the hover bike. Hover bike is able to fly across the city as well as surf on the water. It is powered by element 90. It is used as a private vehicle in and around the city. A view that shows it in the immersive cyberpunk nature of the city. Stops have the correct characteristics of docking as well as charging spots via a new nuclear energy element 90. Public stops have their own private network range to map the air traffic, while the private stops are placed around the residential amalgamations as well as around the public plazas in different levels. Along with the stops, we have a mega parking concept where we connect the transits from the nuclear station and city transit at the waterfront. Element 90 becomes the powerhouse source of the entire parking system. Along with the vehicle parking charge, we also placed air and water purifiers recharged by the Element 90. Vertical gates for the spaceships are laid out for public and cargo parking pool. Finally, we lay down a network that for the city that is powered by the nuclear energy showing DNA tasks, parking units, and the vehicles around. 
The design of Cosmogony will aim to find the connection of memories between the users, the habitat, the vehicle, and the city. We design a scenario where memories interact simultaneously. Modern memories city is shaped by the memories. The human experience have a significant role in the city. These are the early experiments using slime mold and the strategy of iterations and experiments. The first layer is the site data where the old city takes place and the topography of the site is presented. The second layer is the neighborhood layer where amalgamation gets deployed. The transit layer for generating the thinnest networks connecting the residential units. The public city features like sense spaces, memory plaza, and exhibits are a part of this city. And finally, a view of the networks consisting of the primary, secondary, and the tertiary transits. This is the city of Tokyo, modified by the multi memories era. And this is the final map where you can see all the layers interact together. The glow in the certain areas represent the memories flowing through the city, indicating a higher density using parameters of density and network connection. The city started to form looking to find the shortest path to connect the networks. Even when you present this final map as a final image of the city, modern memory city will be in constant change. To conclude, this is important to say that Malton Memories project is designed to imagine a new present, thinking to reduce the impact on the planet and provoke evolution in the body emerging with the machine. The use of immersive memories will shape this world, the thoughts and the experience that users will have to impact to the collective. And this is the summary of my final. Now let, let's dive into this uh, concept of the narrative of cinema in architecture. Uh, how to timeline your story? You have seen the entire design now, like how to put this into a cinematography na narrative is very important. So we, we think of a narrative that lays down the entire design in a format. Environment and mood board, uh, like mood boards are very important for a, for a for a design that of this kind that has this uh, special characteristics of colors of cyberpunk and a dystopian future preparing assets i'll show how how we went behind the scene with the preparation of these assets assisting assets not your design is not just the core of this uh, representation you need actors around it character animations scene setup textures and lights camera setting good music for sure. And once you are done, go back to the point one again and check if your narrative fits in there. Narrative for architecture and design in cinema. Cinema is a play of expression and narrative write writing. And on the other hand, architecture is a bold and long lasting identity which speaks for itself through built structures. Both have a relationship that goes a long way and is both superficial and profound. Here is a huge influence of my narrative. My mind is human. My body is manufactured. I'm the first of my kind, but that won't be the last. We cling to memories as if they define us, but what we do defines us. My ghost survived to remind the next of us that humanity is our virtue. I know who I am and what I'm here to do.
so this is how i went with the narration of memories look at the environment behind and this uh, idea of how you present your design as a story in in a form of a movie so that that here uh, the inspiration of the immersive environments was a straightforward from ghost in the shell for me to put down the narrative i combined it into a story that should show memory manipulation storage and implantation to achieve interactive and immersive environment for the mood boards i always had the cyberpunk dystopian and futuristic approach in my head so referencing and mood boarding is very important there like a key key important uh, factor like you place it in front of your laptop or somewhere keep designing just going back to it and see if you actually follow that uh, it's like not many styles should collaborate it should be in a sync with two or three styles that go together lighting is very important for cinematics it's really important even for your architecture renders lighting is a key role there so my uh, my inspiration was usually these holograms uh, neon lights billboards and these uh, uh, kind of lights but um, yeah preparing assets like designing these models get a sketch first like know what you want to design you just don't have to move your mouse and just keep on sculpting something have a laid lay down of the functions uh, what you have to execute so for me i used to usually start from the initial sketches skeleton structures are very important design in layers uh, not just one outer body but in layers you develop so you have more variety and variations for your characters for me uh, like uh, i used to design by parts like memory collection unit was the core important part uh, the system in my unit that has to be flaunted so i i went deep into and the, the details and the design of the headset that was the collection unit and then like developing the nearby uh, organs and uh, these parts that could uh, develop and uh, like more define my side of there keeping the models optimized and low poly is very important a good designer will not just keep meshing and like uh, getting to the some trillion and million polygons but keep it clean keep it, keep it low it will really help you in the end so like i i usually used to keep it very low poly from the start so i don't like get stuck up when it's time for the unreal stuff these were like my final renders like they they appear very high detail but like they were always low poly so light and renders for these like uh, before you export it for a 3d uh, cinematic approach test it into the 2d renders like how they appear in a good light so like show off your details for sure if you are working hard on that like just put up some blow up close ups so i use personally substance painter for these textures because like i could use it to export it on unreal as well as for my 2d renders on maya so uh, i used to do these texturing and testing out in different lightings and hd rise which are very important for the corpuscle it's very important even if you design a house nowadays in architecture you do the zoning so keep the zoning very important there and for me i started sculpting out the small details according to the zones which i wanted to but i kept in mind that there should be a transition from my cyborg to the habitat it should share the same detail so i just started to detail the, it into the same language of processes getting out those hard surface edges and the interiors uh, i wanted to keep it a little different from the mechanical style so i i did this uh, sculptures in like uh, zbrush making these bed sitting structures like do not uh, i do not say that uh, go entirely into the interiors and do everything but have some personalized assets that are the actor of your scenes and then just have these background assets to support you so like this was my final render for the corpuscle where i like uh, have a relationship with my processes and my uh, future chapters as well a detail blown up like how it is laid in layers as well as like uh, it has all the characteristics as the processes of the cyborg laying it down it in layers having the functionalities and having these uh, memory manipulation and all these ideas 
and uh, finally the lighting there i try to keep it like uh, it is set in one environment it shouldn't reflect that it it goes outside uh, you place somewhere um, uh, in like a baroque architecture it shouldn't look like that but it should has uh, have the consistent lighting of the environment there some details and the so we have two corpuses there one is like the lab unit that is like floating on the coast of the water the second is like immersed in the city so second one is a little subtle in details because it's like floating in the sky and is in the skyline and it has the minimal details and is like um, uh, outside the city functioning as the lab unit so it is more on the details of the interiors like uh, that we'll show in the movie soon uh, on how these uh, process and mechanism goes inside and not outside because like the city one is more on the outside it it flaunts its beauty on the outside uh, and the lab bim uh, is mostly for the inside because it focuses the lab areas and some early quick renders for these for the amalgamation now one corpuscle multiplies into a city into a residential unit coming out with the public pockets and all these spaces so it's very high poly so we start with a very low poly design there and check out how these uh, give, give us a connection between these neighborhoods and we develop uh, some samples for that for those connections uh, i use uh, waspair and uh, like uh, i i tried this connection with the bridges tunnels and i used elements as a design catalog that i thought could assist and enhance my design so i had these immersive uh, layers of these uh, neon signs there assisting uh, actors of billboards and this memory uh, manipulation of these plazas that like bring in my audience and like other than the residential units you have an environment it's not just about the corpuscle that you are seeing but right now it's about the environment that you are surrounded with so like these were my two kind of the catalogs that i used the first one was the residential one which used like these vending machines uh, uh, these talking these connectors walkways parking uh zebra bridge uh, and like different types of bridges i designed for them and these parking uh, slots and um, uh, some monitors arcades because you know it's like a futuristic and uh, sci-fi and then these uh, assisting the uh, actors there like the billboards uh, that would be more mainly in the public spaces uh, these foot uh, walkways and footpaths and connecting bridges uh, vending machines and so on so you have to have a good balance of your main actor and the assisting actors there to have like more immersive and a detailed output there so these were a few of my early renders there for the networks i wanted to keep it in discrete nature and not just uh, any road network because my entire design was uh, very mechanical and uh, uh the futuristic so i wanted to develop some network that would be in a discrete fashion and th that would even go vertical as well as horizontal i wouldn't uh, i didn't want it to limit myself on a horizontal uh, layout of these networks so for the vehicles back again i follow the same language of my cyborgs and the habitat of the corpuscel keeping it very mechanical and cyberpunkish and procedural here as well so these were the initial sketches of my two vehicles so one was the public and the private so i developed these parts the initial parts uh, of the blocking procedurally on houdini using houdini i could like just go back and manipulate the base structure there and like uh, come out and detail on maya or zbrush on or any other polygon modeling so the base of these um, uh, units were kept very procedural on houdini and then like i started layering them down into different uh, levels of meshes and like uh, modeling and started developing parts by parts the wing area like i had it uh, separated as wing areas or like the engines and the main body and like you detail it out and since it's procedural you have the limits to go back and get a new iteration so then i started this uh, early texturing on substance and check out how the colors go with it or how the assembly of these parts together goes with it because it's a kit of parts and you have to assemble it to have as many variations as you like so like these were one of the final renders there 
uh, this was like the blocking out of the bike this wasn't a procedural it started straight away from my i started blocking out some different parts and like assembling and i wanted to try a different approach for this vehicle and uh, because i wanted to like detail it to the hardcore because like you have this idea of jet bikes and hover bikes with the sci-fi mechanical uh, wires cables and engines and all these parts so uh, yeah i wanted to keep this a uh, very kind of um, uh, stuff that is very detailed so like i started with the polygon modeling here and then when i was happy i started texturing and getting out these layers i mean i did this into six layers the back part and the uh, this tank area and this uh, under underneath that has all the machinery there and these uh, edges that are like hard surface but very clean and smooth without details and like these were my uh, renders that I did from the sub substance and then rendered on V-Ray and texturing is very important like these decals are very small details but it enhances your design to a very hardcore level like uh, you might ignore this or skip this but once you put on these small details, it like enhances the beauty of your design there. So coming to the Unreal, like I have all my assets there, assisting assets there, actors and all, everything designed. For Unreal, uh, I know it can handle a lot of uh, billion polygons there, but uh, it's like ideal to break it up into scenes because uh, uh, like even in the film industry, if you see, not every scene is uh, shot in one location. They move into uh, different scenes. So I had this break up of my scenes, which could like give me ideal uh, color moods, mood boards, light moods, according to the scene that I was. So I split it into the six scenes according to my narrative. The first one was the underwater Tokyo scene, where like my scene starts with these uh, uh, isolated core on the coastline waterfront of Tokyo with a very misty uh, few uh, like this foggy uh, winter kind of uh, space with glaciers around and all that stuff and then like enhancing the beauty of the interiors of that BIM like showing the interiors of the lab and what's the ideal functioning of this narrative how the memory is being extracted and these cyborgs in a relationship then there is a transition between the waterfront coast to the city. So this is a shift that I wanted to focus because it shouldn't break the audience there coming from a very um, isolated uh, view to a, a very overwhelming uh, city structure. So I just spend a lot of time there uh, to figure it out. And then like inside the city, like going from the aerial view to the inside, how people are walking, what are the interactions there, emotions, like is Cyborg just a machine or they just like move out and hang out are like us, like the market spaces and all that stuff. So here the assisting actors work more than your primary actors. Then a fifth one was the memory center to show the core idea of my narrative, like around the memory manipulation. And then finally ending it up again into a scene of the cityscape, which you'll see very soon. For them, the entire core, I thought, like when I transit from one uh, like set to another, you shouldn't, I mean, you wouldn't feel the difference between those because uh, the main idea was to keep all of them in one theme of transition. So I just had two mood boards in constant. One was the Blade Runner lighting mood board where I kept the hues of blues in the main, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this the saturation, while the background colors were usually the neon lights or the holographic uh, influences around. And for the environment, I have this uh, idea of uh, having these floating characters, their holograms, and uh, like getting a more immersive and interactive uh, environment uh, for the user to experience through their memories. Keeping both in mind the environment and the lighting mood boards, I started with my first scene where my location was like the outers of the city, as I said. Uh, and uh, it also went underwater for labs and the environment there was like very harsh fogs, waves and uh, the environment was the hues of blues that I wanted to keep and like um, uh, what assets are they covering in this scene. I kept my BIM uh, underwater, my stops, my vehicles to show like my bringing out my designs in different sets and like covering the entire design there. So I just break it up into different uh, scenes and like uh, how how this uh, looks into the scene, some snips of that. 
now now like we transition from outside to inside so this is the interior of those labs and then keeping the environment constant from outside to inside we keep the hues of blues and reds and uh, we bring in our characters now and like use the sci-fi props and the screens and like uh, these assisting roles there so the main idea now the character comes in there so uh, it is usually good to have a mutual new uh, this uh, variations and mutations in your characters because if i mean uh, consider it in reality you do not have just one human moving around you have a variation of it so i mean it's good to at least have four samples or three samples of humans there and like they just replicate or like uh, redesign them so i i had this two main characters one was this uh, lady back there uh, which is the main prosthesis and this man here which is the main uh, male character lead and like these two are the assisting characters there so the animations with each scenes you have to figure out what you are going to show your audience in that scene like if it is in lab they, these guys are moving or like if there is an accident scene they are like hit by the car or if they are sitting working on the desk figure out these animations first like with and break it up into the scenes like which animations fits best for that scene and then like you start rigging your characters so there is where the comes the uh, the main play of the low poly as i said in the starting if you have your characters low poly it is very easy for you to rig it like straight away to mix them all and just uh one click two click and you are there but if you have high poly you will have a hard time of like uh, optimizing it so like just keep it from the start like uh, it's uh, an advice from my experience so then like when you come in, into the inside uh, you have this uh, main colors uh, that highlight this whole scene are the blues and the reds and like these characters have these different uh, activities going around and it shouldn't uh, look unreal i mean yeah you work in unreal but it shouldn't look unreal it should be as realistic as uh, possible like the background uh, the uh, like like in this scene my actor was this character but uh, we had these guys uh, having some talk in in the background so just keep it as real as possible and uh, like populate your scenes with the right assets it's, it shouldn't be over populated and it shouldn't be less populated it should just have the right content and the right uh, golden ratio of your scene where to focus so keeping these colors in mind like uh, i i decided the spots that i need to highlight and focus more on my scenes and like bringing in uh, uh, the vehicles like bringing in more assets of your design slowly with the narrative so with characters now i have my vehicles there and then like finally we stopped and this is the transition that i was talking about from a very um, misty uh, hue of uh, this glacier end of the water waterfront on the tokyo to a very immersive uh, city nature you have this transition so it should be really smooth like you shouldn't feel out of the picture or like oh you there there are two movies that that are going on or there is a shift that you do not understand it should be a really smooth transition if you are changing your environments and the sets so uh, like uh, in the scene 3 we show the tokyo city and like uh, we have these uh, immersive neon lights billboards and the assets used are like these uh, uh, characters self props vehicles city amalgamations comes in like each and every scene brings in new characters to my uh, assets to my scene so that my entire story is covering slowly and steadily and the assisting assets like the holograms billboards bridges cities neon signs and the buildings and so on so like getting in an a very immersive uh, layout there these are like the views that uh, set me to to my narrative that that gives me an immersive nature to my narrative and like uh, it's a good idea to bring in your assets as billboards or maybe um, just showcase like uh, have it uh, have it look more personal to your design if i like just place it somewhere one could like easily say okay that, that's not my inspiration is from ghost in the shell but it's not ghost in the shell it's my own uh, work there so try to make it more personal and more categorized to your design uh, assets there and uh, yeah like 
now i come down to the city and like i focus more on my characters and the animations their activities and how they are as a society these cyborgs how are they relating to each other are they like um, all robotic or do they have these uh, feelings or all that stuff so i bring in uh, two main characteristics in this scene that is the emotions of the cyborg there and uh, these uh, memory manipulation and like uh, bring it in the narrative along with a very important asset that is the surrounding the city is very important in this scene because you like dive it down to the human scale you are not anymore in the aerial scale, scale you are into the human scale and like you could uh, like experience everything around you so the environment around you is very important to be created here so this is my bim that is placed in the city with the with, with the assisting uh, the uh, the surroundings and these uh, actors that support it it shouldn't just look out of the box placed there and these activities they show a relation of the cyborg so here the animations takes a lot of uh, good impact there and how they interact if they're talking or if they're having food or like just walking uh, so this is something that you have to lay down there before you start the scene like what what is the happening in that scene the actor what is the script behind that so th this is the scene when you come down to a, a eye level uh, you have to figure this out very important scene then the final scene that shows the entire rigid concept about the memory manipulation like there is a scene that happens in the scene 4 which you will see in the video and then this like this memory center where the entire concept is being shown that the memory is being retrieved and just manipulated the guy is like uh, on the death bed or something and uh, but his memory is like restored and saved there and then this guy could like uh, just uh, i mean his memories could be relived and uh, yeah so this is like the extraction of this uh, i i put it a mock scene there like a mortuary uh, where this they have this dead body showing like the guy dies but the uh, this extraction of the memory takes place and it could be used in for future so there is a scene set up behind every uh, thought like uh, how, how you portray this consisting of the narrative as i said when you finish all the points go back to the narrative and see like if you're following that and bringing all your assets slowly it's not that in one scene you have your corpusal amalgamation cyborg and uh, these uh, everything uh, overpopulating and like overwhelming the audience like just bring it uh, slowly and gradually and then like the final scene we end up with a happy note or say like the immersive nature or the core of the entire concept that is like the very immersive and interactive environment and like we end this scene uh, using this um, characters that we already used but in an aerial view and we like to show flash so this is one of the ending scene and once like you are done good music is really important very important i realized like i i recorded my entire scene and i just played it but when i had this music and i played it like oh it's like and i i mean if i am not a sound designer and i could do this like just uh, don't put one music from the start to the end and just end it up there because music might be uh, looking uh, least important but it is very important there so like just uh, try to have this break up of these sounds and like understand the waveform like it's like a part of design everything is designed so yeah just uh, if you could like just focus on that it it will definitely end up to a good movie so if you guys are ready let's play the song do, 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 do. <laughs> okay
Whoa, this was a heavy dose. <laughs> yeah. So, so the entire idea was like it started with a good note showing this uh, labs and memories and environment. The guy dies, but the memories still stay in that immersive environment. So yeah, that was the entire behind the scene and on the scene outputs from my end. I must say, like. This is incredible work, and like every time I see, I'm like more blown away because like after sharing your process, I could learn more. Look like how like connect the dots, how you put it together, and what amount of detail and work and process uh, you have gone through. Like kudos. Thank you. I try to like compress it so as not to bore you guys much and like uh, keep it minimum and like on onto the track that would help you but like uh, if talking in detail it was like a huge uh, kind of a process like uh, where we just spent like time or like days where we just figuring it out the character animations or like what is the activity that we want there and how many characters i mean they're very small details but you know the uh, this devil lies in the details so you have to be very prompt with the details to have a good output be that anything so it's in every details were like figured it out uh, the the billboards what what are they showcasing it's not like any billboard that we picked up there so all of that like compiling it up it was just a uh, memory of uh, it was just a memory of uh, <laughs> these days and nights for sure that i'll always remember oh man but like I, if you want to take a break i think like this was a big big uh, like <laughs> it it sound like it looked more like a workshop to me because like i could <laughs> see all the 10 steps and going and even like on the each slides I I really appreciate you put out like which software, what were the assets and things, so it people can just rewind the video, see okay if I want to like uh, take inspiration from the scene and create some similar thing. These are the things I should take yeah. care and like mix and match. Yeah, like you can watch the video and stop at any scene and like just go back to the which scene which I was talking about. So you'll have all these. characters and the assets main actors and the assisting uh, in the background you'll figure it out much more uh, now with this uh, break up of the scene so yeah like i, I just uh, uh, this gave uh, the chef gave its recipe to you <laughs> i see so is there like uh, for example i know you mentioned a lot of tools here so if mm -hmm. if i were to ask like okay prioritize few or one tool and few of the things within that tool one should learn like what is like 80 20 rule like okay yeah so with i mean um uh, before like 9 months uh, i started this masters with the uh, design morphine uh i i learned a lot in the process so now if i'll guide you i'll guide you from my experience but what i did is not the best uh, thing i would say but i learned it from my process so i would say what i would say is proceduralism is very important if you could have a generative workflow it would save you time and like it would say i mean give you much more iterations and like uh, enhance your design to the best capability i had a huge inclination as i said for these mechanical designs and cyberpunk uh, and uh, dystopian futures but if i could have got proceduralism in my workflow from the very starting as i brought it in chapter 4 in mechanics is uh, developing these vehicles and i saw that benefit there but if i could have that those in my characters on in my corpuscle there i could have developed more iterations there or like me i mean uh, i am satisfied with what i did there but uh, if you ask me uh, if i could go back and improve something there is something that i would say proceduralism is something that uh, you should like have it in your design and think before like your design like think of it in how you could have those mutations in your design or have these iterations and develop more outputs and all of those stuff and like just go out of the box now you have mid journey like just go and explore and get those ideas there before you like start actually um, using your mouse and your laptop like just go out and explore i would say yeah and, and so like, it is 20 rule 
follows for me with this uh, proceduralism 80% and 20% goes for the polygon modeling. You cannot avoid polygon modeling for this kind of stuff. But if you have proceduralism, then you are on way top, like saving time, saving uh, energy with the best outputs there. Awesome, awesome. And I was like, the moment you mentioned mid journey, like for getting mm -hmm. out quick iterations, like, are there any like hacks uh, you, you would suggest to get the initial idea and like experience out as soon as possible? So what I mean by that is in uh, in Unreal Marketplace, there are a lot of like city assets or templates mm -hmm. out for free mm -hmm. and one could integrate that instead of building from scratch. So are there yes. any other hacks uh, you would? Yes, yes, yes. You want all my hacks, basically. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe give give some 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 tips. No, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So the best thing is like explore. Unreal is a marketplace where you could explore on like for free so much. Like uh, I mean, Unreal is something that's so close to my heart now because uh, something for free and uh, to explore for everyone from artists uh, to cinema makers, filmmakers, and everyone. It's like a huge platform. Don't be overwhelmed because I know some some uh, projects there are like so dope and uh, if you see. But uh, looking at the current scenario, movies like Love, Dead and Robots and the, coming with the meta humans and all these concepts, Unreal is some, a go-to place for every architect or designer or anyone like uh, who's starting onto this uh, scene so uh, for this uh, base template i would say there are a lot of free stuff coming up every month there and even if you don't find it there uh, i mean uh, at that moment of time there are like some very cheap ones like you can uh, use them to start off your uh, exploration like i bought this uh, set from kid bash yeah I, I would definitely recommend everyone to use the skit uh, which is free to start your kid bash journey and like uh, uh, to explore just on Unreal if you want to. Just uh, take this free kit from kid bash and like just start assembling your models there and play with the lights. Lights is where, like is the key role for every uh, design. Like yeah, you could even uh, paint uh, London in a cyberpunk uh, future and paint Tokyo in a new classical future uh, this architecture if you have the right lights there so yes modeling is very important but if you're talking about the assisting uh, characters or the scenes uh, or the base template then just work on your lights there but um, uh, like uh, yeah i mean the kid bash has this free kit but otherwise uh, just in unreal keep scrolling you have this free for the month uh, option uh, I, I always just have my eyes there every month there so what what's coming up but uh, other than that also once you have you are into this beginner to a bit of intermediate uh, stuff you will uh, be tempted to buy some scenes to see what these artists are doing how they're placing these lights cameras which are very important like using it in a uh, different uh, set like uh, placing uh, these camera shakes and all this uh, are like you learn gradually but for the starters I would definitely say to get the, get this uh, kid bash free kit and uh, try for the unreal scene and just get a good lighting there to, for, for the starter to, to explore the lights and how that plays an important role in every aspect of design not just filmmaking or architecture in just product rendering everything light is very important so just play around with that once you have the assets and then start like slowly start to bring your own assets to make your scenes very personalized and like uh, even if you have just one uh, human figure there or a robot there and have a huge building uh, cityscape there just try to focus the camera like this is how this uh, uh, cinematography comes in your action. How are you placing your camera? How is it moving it with your animations? And how is the main actor the main actor there and not the assisting characters? Because like in my scenes, you might have seen uh, the story going on there, but the assisting actors are like 80% there. And my main characters are like, if I have one vehicle of mine i have uh, 15 vehicles that are just assisting that scene but my camera is focusing on that and that just becomes the background even if they are in the maximum uh, percentage there so that's how you like try to figure out the scenes there start from the environment and the lights i would say like yeah i see and like i saw like uh in few scenes like it was really well like detailed of like water on ground texture and 
with the light it was like really giving a good feel so are there any mm -hmm. hacks in like uh, i know in texture you can do like bump and create this like a morphing uh, illusion mm -hmm. are there any hacks on on that level or for texturing i to be honest where, where i mean i use those startup materials to understand what i mean uh, there are very good uh, startup materials uh, in the content uh, if you just open any unreal scene just uh, like go back there understand the layout of these uh, materials how these like are uh, parent material and the instance material and just try to uh, learn those from the very core and like there were five to six uh, materials that i just laid down for myself to understand i just kept exploring on that end for like these metal ones and uh, these uh, holographic ones and uh, this um, glass textures are very important if you want to get some realistic stuff glass like plays a very important role there in transparency and all that stuff once you go into the camera settings you could find all of those so these bring the realism in your scene like slowly and gradually so for me like there were just four five uh, met i mean materials like uh, which i focused mainly but uh, I, i mean uh, whenever i used to hop in a scene or like some free content i used to like uh, i i still uh, am used to go to this uh, material node and see how that material is made like it's very important it looks complex complex and overwhelming for sure but uh, if you deep, uh, deep dive into that slowly gradually you'll have fun i mean this uh, entire last part of my um, uh, this masters was very fun in terms of exploring and uh, i mean yeah it was hard and like a uh, lot of time taking but it was in a fun way like i i'm just enjoying what i'm doing it's like watching a movie and spending hours so yeah it's like a fun process like uh, don't be overwhelmed or like um, just uh, give up in the starting by seeing these these material uh, wirings and nodes just like give it a time and like start very slow from the start of the content understand the materials and i mean if you are familiar with v ray people would usually have the tendency to understand it much uh, better but even if not i think unreal is the simplest software made if you just give it some time like yeah it has a lot of stuff but easy and peasy if you like go slowly and gradually there yeah like i think that one that you gave like really good tip understand and get the free content dissect it uh, go to blueprints nodes material and uh, if you have if you like a particular feature try to like uh, go from like bot, uh, bottom up like how it's been constructed in the scene so that, yeah yes yes and also like these surfaces and textures uh, i think uh, there is a lot of content on uh, youtube which i like preferred watching it uh, other than this sort of content uh, which just focuses on materials and it it is like um, simple to start with and once you understand the uh, functions of each node you are easy to go to create your own materials and like uh, enhance it and uh, like uh, more uh, kind of uh, appreciate the uh this nodes of these uh, unreal and uh, because i uh, textured them in substance painter i could like just grab the maps and like uh, play with those uh, values there and like do it procedurally and uh, bake the uh, uh, these textures there so just yeah once you are on some level up from the beginner just try it uh, try that out to get some proceduralism there and uh, then get on to animating uh, animated characters and all that stuff it's like something more than a beginner but uh, definitely once you are there there is no stopping you definitely explore it by yourself yeah and i saw like you use like mixamo for character animation and uh, one of the screenshot i could find the sequencer uh, like in uh, in unreal so if if i get it right like you you define a scene you start placing assets you uh, figure out what are the assets you want to have dynamic features or actors then you bring in either from mixamo or you could add some interactivity with blueprint the hand you choreograph the camera motion and the whole script in the sequencer and you package like also lighting is very important i forgot it you package the whole scene uh you didn't forget lighting <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, so yeah 
you're, you're right on that way uh, so this is like something that uh, if you have like this entire story uh, like for example you you want to film something uh, like like just imagine your favorite uh, show like tom and jerry well it starts from this uh, tom running behind jerry and then the, uh, the master of tom is like beating her and this dog is running so there is a story now you just break it up into scenes Tom running behind the Jerry is in the house, and then you run outside the house. Spike is following you, and this uh, the scene goes, and so on, so on. Just break those scenes and have that consistency of transition. If you are teleported from scene one to scene two, you shouldn't figure that out. Like uh, the, the like I shifted the scenes. The colors and the lighting should be so consistent there that uh, you do not figure it out. Okay, there is a ch- shift in the scene until and unless you are like in entirely new location from Switzerland or to say uh, London or America. Until then, it shouldn't be that. But even then, your uh, consistency consistency of the environment should be there to have a one narrative there. So after you have the design, think of a narrative and like it should. definitely go parallelly with your design though but uh, like give it a story like uh, this is the art nowadays storytelling is has become an art in every field like so uh, if you break up any movie you will find all the elements as a designer there from narration to script writing to direction to everything like the whole choreography is like a designer so it, it is definitely uh, like an art direction if you look into that uh, perspective yeah like i could imagine like you played like so many different roles in the whole project like right yes. from uh, like in a gaming project i could imagine there is a asset creator yes. studio director then lighting designer music sound designer story yes. writer character manipulation and like rigging so like at least five six roles you have played in this whole yes. process <laughs> I mean, all of us, all of us do that. If you just break up uh, any project, uh, I mean, uh, a project that has been given time, all of us have those uh, ing- ingredients there to make up that uh, good dish because we all are doing that. All basically, I mean, already we just don't realize that until we are like uh, focusing. Okay, I'm doing this into this direction. Until then, uh, I mean, uh, all of us are doing it. Uh, from the scratch to the end if you see any architecture project from uh, to, uh from the scratch of the concept sketch to the execution of the final photography and uh, video- videography and uh, execution it's it's like there it's like in us already so yes yeah man i, I think uh, architecture in our we should do like at least one day or workshop on storytelling finding like yes. making the climax and engaging the yes. people because like it's so you can translate this to any part of life even the presentation you give or other things you are involved yes. in yeah yes yes absolutely like in this in this masters we started with theory we had this lab with the theory where we have to figure out the entire narrative of the five chapters uh in a core uh, sketch like i said like uh, you have to have this uh, narrative in the background but uh, like in the end you have a detailed narrative and this script but uh, because we were forced to think of those five chapters from the very starting like maybe in a very vague sense because we haven't uh, done one two three four chapters but we are thinking about the fifth one right now so we had this uh, line of uh, scenes like uh, we, if you break up of these scenes we have this uh, core details of each scene in our head in a very vague manner even or in a blurry manner and with each theory we had improved our narration and uh, storytelling and speculation of each scene uh with every chapter so i i mean uh, i wasn't a big fan of theory until uh, this but uh, when i realized how it uh, impacts your project like just don't go and make those elevations and put some good renders uh, get some uh, happening around there i mean it, it speaks for itself you don't have to like uh, explain every uh, element of your design it would definitely speak for you and it's definitely more stronger than uh, without a narrative or a without a script uh, project so yeah yeah and like to like uh, i could see like the whole exponential change like in a year after your masters and 
before and uh, one of the reason like uh, I thought of organizing this is like a lot of people who were uh, in your place a year ago and they see this cool amazing cinematic video and then like oh I want to do this kind of stuff mm-hmm. so like you covered the first half of like decoding the whole cinematic process and if uh, if a young Eva comes and okay I want to know behind the one year <laughs> behind the one year uh, or some uh, workflows of assets um, mm-hmm. what would that be so like uh, one year ago and like uh, it's like 2022 I came back home uh, uh, in 2020 I uh, so I had this uh, job in Tokyo uh, until uh, this uh, September. I had to join in August, basically after my graduation in July. But uh, because COVID like uh, continued and nobody had this idea that it would prevail so long. And uh, I mean, uh, I waited like things would lift up. Uh, but until like October, I gave up. Okay, there is no uh, uh, uplifting happening or the COVID is not going back. It will just stay. And this is the life forever now. I, I I just uh, hung up the thought of going and just uh, stuck behind on these uh, workshops I started, especially uh, with this uh, Futurely and Design Mopi and CD Next and all these guys, Parametric Architecture. I did the studio with Eric and I mean, it slowly and gradually started opening the doors of my mind and something that I always like, if, if somebody would approach me, I would definitely relate to that person because back at that time whatever i used to have in my mind i couldn't get it on my uh, screen maybe or i didn't know i mean basically i didn't even know i would say um, i mean let go the talent or uh, the capability i had no clue of it because i came from a very traditional background of architecture making those cubes and uh, houses and these uh, stuff so uh, i mean uh, i could just uh, do a wow on the screen seeing people's projects but i had no clue to how to proceed how to integrate fashion with architecture or like how do they do it is the big thing so i started doing these uh, small um, Firstly, I started with these uh, free uh, YouTube uh, webinars uh, we have uh, happening. I mean, there is a lot of stuff nowadays uh, that's uh, available on YouTube and like some free courses to start with and like explore. I mean, uh, don't be oriented into one direction. Like, okay, I like shoe design. Let's just try it out uh, with architecture. Just like keep your uh, horses wild. The Let them like uh, take a good stride and let let them decide in the finish line like okay this is something you want to pursue like uh, as you said i played a lot of actors in my uh, movie there but at the end of the race when i finished this i realized okay what i want to do next it's like streamlined into like proceduralism uh, generation of these assets and wilder world that i'm doing right now so i mean uh, right now i'm not scripting i'm not uh, choreographing i'm not uh, i'm not doing it all i'm like streamlining my specialization but just let yourself uh, to explore for a year or like so and just know what hits you the best or like uh, what's your way just make your own way there and uh, you'll know that okay this is something i mean as i said for me proceduralism uh, in my workflow uh, uh, is important for somebody it would be just calling in uh, modeling they would like the hardcore uh, traditional method of sculpting or something so it is up to you with your experiences what interests you so just don't limit yourself i would say and uh, never be uh, scared or like uh, intimidated to ask somebody how that is done uh, trust me they they would like uh, never i believe they're genuine and uh, they, they would never feel uh, they would let, they would never look down at you they would like uh, try to break up the process for you or help you out so uh, be shameless in the process just keep asking uh, keep asking people okay how do you do this or uh, what should i do or uh, this is something i like and uh, uh, i mean this this is a process that i followed i just uh, kept asking people like okay i i like this how to do this and uh, i just kept working and kept working one year i just remember before this masters i was just grinding myself and uh, having this process of uh, different softwares different cultures of architecture of all this stuff i was just exploring on that end to see what fits me and the best thing is i mean i don't know uh, if it uh, looks like this or not 
uh, in this masters this was my first time i was doing this uh, movie making or this style of cyberpunk or uh, this mechanical uh, hard surface modeling all this was my first time because uh, one year i was just grinding to know experiment my umbrella of thoughts and then like just coming and channelizing my thoughts into one direction so for the first few days it was difficult because uh, i was limited to one style there but once you are into that style you will know you, it's not just one style you are always there expanding so there is where the proceduralism and uh, generative stuff became my good friend and i realized okay there are uh, no limitations there you are open to opportunities so i would say give yourself time give your work time and um, there is nothing that could stop you there is no inborn talent it's just hard work there yeah and like it's, it's insane to like uh, like when you say you didn't have experience one year before like like after watching the video and your work like okay she must be doing for a lot of years it it, it feels like very professional so kudos to all of your uh, hard work because i i could guarantee you had a lot of sleepless nights to make it to this level and i was thinking like okay one way to come up to this level is uh, going to the path of design morphin masters another way mm-hmm. is like uh, a lot of uh, uh, c- communities like design morphin futurely have this seminars and workshops so one could like navigate and try various workshops and find what yeah. they are really interested that could be uh, one approach and uh, i could i always see like this discussions okay there's so many software uh, should i become expert in one or should i keep on learning more like how do you like prioritize this um for, for the beginners i would say never marry one software just have a romantic relationship with all of them and uh, try to explore uh, you never know which uh, software gives you the best kick out there and uh, don't be uh, i mean don't be like okay let's dip your hands in every uh, uh, software it's not even that like uh, the, everything in excess is also bad so i mean just try out uh, different uh, softwares uh, in terms of the same language like if you are trying to achieve something organic uh, for a body implant or something like that a design you could try that on maya by frost or like you could just go to the hudni and like uh, explore. so be in the same like you just don't have to learn for the sake okay tick mark i okay cinema 4d done blender done no that's not uh, the rule it's like uh, you could generate the same box in the five softwares with different workflows and when you know okay this hits me the best or this combination until uh, hudni and this uh, generative workflow i had this maya and zbrush package for me which i like was my go to softwares like i put a good uh, concept sketch first in maya take it to zbrush sculpt around it get, get, get it some details bring it out on maya again come back there so it was just my uh, workflow there but uh, once like uh, you you uh, realize uh, uh, what fits your design best or uh, what inclines to the language that uh, you convey with your designs and uh, ideas uh, you'll know that okay you do not need all the softwares but a good hand in all the just it's just like architecture school you do not need construction electrical mechanical and all of them but you know all of them you study all of those stuff, subjects there So, so you know you have a knowledge there and you know okay if there is some uh, structural detail uh, how how could you um, you don't specialize in it but you know the basics there and you just can go back there and improve your design so they, these are just a uh, uh, team to improve your uh, design and give your best outputs but you know where you specialize in so once you are there in all those uh, different softwares uh, you you know what's the best for you yeah so like attend like one workshop in all this software so you know the possibilities and capabilities and whatever software you align the most go deep because like one could argue like uh, they could do a lot of stuff in grasshopper and rhino itself 
like if they know there is always an argue of uh, rhino 7 sub d modeling and maya modeling so i always tell ask them the first thing is do you work on maya like if somebody is uh, like uh, pushing rhino sub d i asked do, do you work on maya or did you work on maya ever they are just no so i just send them back for that argument like just go through that and then come up with the opportunities and discussions so you will know okay this can't be done there and this could be done here or it just couldn't be done here and this could be done there so it's like all about experiments and uh, yourself uh, uh, scratching there where you just uh, nail out the first layers to know what fits the best so yeah just experiment if you are a beginner just experiment and don't get overwhelmed i'll say yeah and like uh, back in this like metaverse discussions uh i was like reading arguments okay architects uh can't be like full into metaverse because like game designers know much way much better way of like engagement interaction and experience but after looking at this kind of cinematic video i think architects have a place so uh, yes, what do you think sure. like how we provide value in this like metaverse development what are those people naturally better and what are we naturally better for me i would say as an architect there is something uh, called space which we know much more better than uh, any aspect of designers out there i mean uh, with gaming characters and all of those stuff uh, i mean i i feel architect is like an umbrella and all these opportunities start developing down there under the hood of the designers i i don't say we are supreme or something but because our education is such like we are educated with different uh, uh, kind of design aspects of product furniture like we are exposed there and then we narrow down our stream to maybe game designers or maybe uh, product designers or like uh, be anything but uh, i would say we have a good uh, hack or a knowledge of materials of these uh, designs uh, in terms of uh, lighting and in terms of the experience we say every time we enter a space or an architect enters a space he looks around and say oh that's a good space or that's not a good space or they explore um, uh, some maybe a good arc uh, or or like, like say that, that gives a good so that is an experience that is uh, not just in a two dimensional uh, gaming environment but a three dimensional uh, in life immersive experience that an architect uh, or a designer carries with himself or herself so i mean yeah definitely uh, metaverse is something that is the future coming up future um, for the architects bringing up a lot of perspectives and um, enhancement in the designs like you are not lo- limited to these uh, building codes anymore or like uh, give that experience and once coming into virtual virtual aspect you have all the freedoms with your uh, with your uh, power of design like you could go wide up there so definitely i would say it's a plus one points uh, as an architect to enter this space and uh, i definitely have this inclination as well yeah like there are a lot of plus points there should be some minus like we might bring some biasness <laughs> what what are like okay what if like we might also make metaverse buildings very real life uh, looking architecture and like okay are we truly leveraging metaverse like yeah yeah i agree that i mean of course there uh, there it couldn't be uh, any negative i mean i can't say that there isn't any negative there but uh, i mean looking at it positively on a and an opportunistic uh, uh, this side because uh, i feel it's a new opportunity to explore i mean firstly uh, because uh, it gives a platform uh, t- uh, that is like untouched so i mean uh, getting to virtual ba- this uh, setups and environments it has been there uh, for a long time you might have experienced uh, wearing this vr glasses in 5d 7d and so on but now come bringing it into metaverse is something new that is the future uh, uh, thing and uh, it it has already these drawbacks there and these negativities but it's in a very beta stage to judge i would say there are uh, uh, progress happening around and 
i would say like just give it some time to have a final phase there when bigger firms like um, out there adopt this metaverse architect as a job or like uh, as a cluster in their offices and like uh, then it would be good to judge or say okay it's bringing in the best possibility but other than that i see already so many architects are coming up with these workshops and these um, i mean this year in uh, digital futures uh, it has been a great opportunity to see such amazing metaverse projects and with parametric architecture this year also they had this studio with mariana and like the outputs are crazy so these are something that are pushing us to look forward in this direction and definitely it will come up with opportunities and opportunities both but uh, let the time decide it's too early into that stage to have a critic for that i would say like use yeah. the opportunity for now yeah definitely you got to adopt experiment and see yes yeah so if, what would be a dream uh, studio or workshop you would like to teach dream studio <laughs> studio i mean if you ask me to work i i mean uh, if you don't ask me ask anyone in my uh, surrounding everybody would do an answer i i was a big fan of uh, zahadi when i uh, was in my first year and like uh, in my second year i i just uh, heard the news of her demise and like uh, it was really heartbreaking for me because i was a very big fan and i'm still a big fan and always be a big fan of uh, zaha and her work and the studio for sure so as i said uh, with metaverse coming in uh, like right now i'm working uh, with wild worlds and these guys have this amazing stuff for the metaverse like um, i mean don't check my handle but check their handle because definitely if you have a curiosity for what metaverse has to come up with or the opportunities that it comes up with they are bringing in like studios like these or like opportunities like these are like the new new uh, i mean uh, new architecture for uh, the architects or the designer uh, new uh, so i mean uh, yes my dream studio was always uh, to work at uh, zhh but uh, for now i really like uh, kind of uh, having a workshop or like a studio with a very um, uh, dystopian style of uh, futuristic uh, architecture coming into a uh, cinematography and this um, uh, this uh, i mean i'm not limited to a game direction where you develop an asset like a character or like uh, some buildings or something uh, but i'm like uh, i just feel i'm a designer not an uh, or an artist and just not specialized in uh, something that is particular but like explore a world like uh, i would say design a world and not just a element of that world so how you could have this as a set in your design i i really have this fascination in future to do something like that even even if not as a workshop but for my personal self to explore on that and uh, that's something uh, too young and crazy to expect right now but uh, yes that, that's something that i look forward to Okay, so actually, I was meaning uh, meaning to ask, like, what would you like to teach in a studio? Oh, okay, 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 okay. I I thought like uh, in the <laughs> terms of the, the yeah, future probably. studio that that I would. Oh, actually, I would. I can. Uh, I mean, I would love to have this uh, ideas where uh where you have your designs uh, ready and you are ready to have that narrative put down and like. lay down your scenes and prepare it like for us then i mean i would say i i can play a role of an art director there right? like uh, something that is ready to be executed like the final uh, you have the core ingredients ready and i'll just uh, be ready to give you the recipe there so that's something uh, i really would look forward to i see and like how does a day in your life look like at wilder worlds and first of all like congratulations and you, you are the first people like i i see mike i see mariana for paving the path and setting precedents how architecture can also like play role in this metaverse and taking ro- prominent roles there so yeah mike is my boss <laughs> <laughs> Mike and all like are uh, my bosses and like touch wood uh, we just had a good week with them and like they are very uh, cooperative in that end and uh, we uh, we feel like um, 
we are just learning into that stage like uh, what they expect from us and what they already have uh, done out there and doing there with all with, the, with those experience they have of the past years they are like uh, some inspirations for us like uh, we as young designers there we are learning the process up there and um, definitely we look, look up to designers like mariana without a doubt like uh, if you ask me one year back the the person i followed madly was mariana until to this date uh, she was a big inspiration and is a big inspiration for me so yeah i really uh, i mean uh, i'm um, excited like to see how we could be an asset to them because at the stage we are in the process to learn and we are definitely going there as slowly and steadily but uh, i am really, really excited to be uh, part of some big project soon maybe or uh, like work with them uh, as a teammate and not <laughs> like uh, under them right now because uh, we are too young and crude um, for that uh, so we are just in the process uh, yeah and for people watching like eva started i, I think a week ago so it's still like a uh, beginning yes. stages yeah so yeah yes. Maybe. but like i have i've been uh, watching uh, i mean i have uh, looking into these nft collections and all that for a year now and when this wild duck came in i was like fascinated with the style uh, that like correlated with me a lot and uh, i mean uh, something as i said like they work on a proceduralism so uh, th- that was something uh, that was uh, fascinating even when i wasn't even a part like few months aba- back when i saw them for the first time and all of that stuff the nft collections they got and uh, everything that's generated procedurally that's what fascinated me and uh, other designers and these collections you know these coming up collections on nfts they are being generated procedurally so i mean it takes time to design the first uh, uh, layout but then after after that it's just one click you go and you just experience the, those varieties and uh, uh outputs that uh, maybe you couldn't uh, get it by or hand modeling or like uh, something that, that saves your time and uh, brings into this uh, uh this uh, uh, this pipeline of uh, ge- generatism so yeah i mean uh, that, that's how it started like uh, from fascination to working there <laughs> so yeah. yeah awesome i know we are at like one and a half hour mark so i'm going to start wrapping the interview so yes is this is there anything like which we didn't cover in this interview and you'd like to uh, touch any point on um i would say uh, not as a what we missed but if, if i would to say wrap up or like uh, end it up on a note i would say like uh, do not uh, be overwhelmed if you are a beginner uh, like this that's a key point if you are like working consistently you will get your uh, road there uh, and uh, if you are not a beginner and uh, intermediate like uh, out there you could like always improvise your skills explore on different ends and uh, look out for opportunities just uh, like have a collaboration with people and do i mean we are in a field where we cannot be just individuals you need a group of designers or a group of people or just a team that refines your ideas so whenever you get a chance collaborate with people know their styles and like understand and like work with them do some competitions i feel competitions are a really healthy uh, exercise uh, to brain uh, to storm your ideas in a week or two or whatever the timeline is it's like a very healthy practice to have some competitions out there and do because when you learn at your own pace or your own uh, recorded uh, videos or uh, tutorials you are like lazy to make the outputs or not but in a competition you have the strategy of putting down these uh, story behind and all this stuff so definitely uh, look up there and watch a lot of movies i would say i mean movies are a great inspiration definitely play a lot of video games uh, i mean i'm suggesting this, this but i'm not i do not play games to be very honest but uh, on the other hand i cover it with the movies i am like a big movie free 
so just watch a lot of movies out there web series there is so much stuff to learn i mean sometimes i feel why the hell am i designing it's already been done or it's like already something to look up for to be on my concept board but you have to be i mean i feel personally i have to be on a stage where i become the concept board for somebody or i become the inspiration or the reference image for somebody so just like always break down the scenes uh, or anything that you look up to from movie to a concept render or uh, anything that you see on your screen just break it up into different scenes or different parts of the scene uh, just to break up the scene where the characters are placed how they are uh, uh, like uh, into a fashion of um, Uh, in relation with each other uh, their activities and what's in the foreground what's highlighted in the focus in the background and all that stuff just like uh, keep these small details always with you and i mean uh, definitely uh, you you'll be there there is no looking back and no fear to be there so yeah oh man yeah that's a great and all, all, also sorry to cut also <laughs> no, anything no, i mean any anything uh, i mean i i'm i'm always open to i mean i always answer people maximum uh, if they approach me so any time uh, because i've been there as my you said uh, one year back so anything that you feel you could do or you like to do or you could have done uh, uh, so, i mean feel free to uh, post down that dm to me or ask me anywhere i'll be happy to help you other than that like just keep uh, do not like irritate people definitely <laughs> by questions give them time to answer but uh, definitely have the curiosity to know and uh, to learn from uh, around so yeah th- that's something uh, can you give a end. shout out to your instagram id oh yeah yeah sure it's a uh, eva khan it's a v a dot k h a triple n okay all right bug uh ever on her instagram if you have any questions but also <laughs> watch the video twice i think she yes. has covered a yes. lot of details in yes. the video itself so if you yes. paid uh, attention you will have answers to all those questions uh i want to know like what were some things you had to put a full stop uh because you had the deadline to deliver this and you <laughs> wanted to add more features you you couldn't end up with this question <laughs> 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 because this was something i still uh, i mean whoever is uh, over me as a head i i asked them just tell me when to stop because there is a dead uh, full stop there as a good designer you could design endlessly all your life but uh, to be on time with all your deliverable deliverables it's important to be very organized and all that stuff is very important so i had a lot of scenes that i did not put in this movie also with the constraint of time of 2 minutes or 3 minutes for the video so uh, there was always this uh, small details i would attend uh, that that o- that was only visible to me if i would show to a third person they, they wouldn't know so it was very personal to me like oh i don't like that light there blinking behind and i just go back to the scene and do that so there were a lot of scenes that i just uh, scraped it off and like uh, bloopers you know keep happening and uh, but uh, i mean uh, i had this thing i don't know i i still have it i i arranged a, a calendar kind of a structure where i used to do i i, I do not used to write the to do for the today or the future i used to put down what i did today so i mean when i used to go back from a week okay from day one i did that i did that i, did, I never used to put the future uh, this uh, bucket list of stuff to be done but uh, as soon as i finished my day or in the next morning when i sit down to work i used to write down that okay what did i achieve so it it was an achievement for me okay i could do that uh, in the past day or uh, day before now today i'll have more than that or just equivalent to that and, and i mean that kept a check on me that okay i did not work um, to the point that i should so also this gives you a uh, idea to be very organized i mean organization is something that's a core important i mean uh, you could be any a uh, good designer for 10 years but uh, what you could be be in two days is very important so yeah keep yourself very organized if you have deadlines for sure 
you you answered in very philosophical way i was like okay <laughs> i mean that... this was that's why i said uh, don't ask me uh, to end this uh, webinar with this question because it was a very uh, core important uh, part of my entire process where i was like uh, okay would i be able to end up all because uh, okay until 2 uh, minutes what i have done it sounds good but will i be able to finish it off that was always a question to me until the end day so i mean uh, yeah to be organized is really really important there awesome uh, generally i do a rapid fire round so mm -hmm. you'll have like 10 seconds you got to make it very brief okay. okay so which city is in your travel bucket bucket list i mean always to you <laughs> i should have known it uh, <laughs> uh, any book or movie which made a big impact in your life oh uh, that's all almost visible there blade runner and ghost in the shell but even matrix and altered carbon all these web series are uh, always on my to do list yeah. even like so, <laughs> a huge chunk of my, list, sorry <laughs> uh, a huge chunk of my rapid fire questions you already answered your role model you already answered <laughs> maybe yeah it's already there <laughs> your favorite restaurant restaurant i'm um, that's a tricky one <laughs> you are, are outside the box now <laughs> i mean any any restaurant that offers a good ramen is a uh, welcome place for me i see and what's your hobby i have uh, seven uh, cats at my place so there is no hobby i'm always occupied by them <laughs> so that, that's uh, my daily day with the laptop screens and my cats <laughs> there is no time for any hobby there <laughs> i see is there anything which most people don't know about you but will be surprised to know uh oh, that's a, i mean i do not have clothes uh, that are not black i mean uh, everything i have is almost black except two three apparels i mean they wouldn't be shown because they <laughs> would have seen all <laughs> me always in black but uh, i mean that's something uh, that people always wonder okay just get some clothes you always have these uh, black <laughs> apparels out there and uh, i think i mean i'm not getting anything uh, straight in my head that that's something strange that people would know about me yeah it's I think like uh, that's it from my side. It was uh, incredible, insightful session. I'm gonna watch it again because there are a few things I wanna okay dissect more. But thanks a lot for like the whole presentation. I I know like you have spent a lot of time and efforts in doing the project as well as putting this presentation. So means a lot. thank you thank you mayur as said uh, it's a pleasure to be hosted by you and like uh, giving my insights for this project which is like very close personally to my heart and with all the efforts uh, the team behind my partner and everyone so i mean i'm always excited to talk about it and it never feels old to me or like i have watched this video for like around 100 or 200 times it always feels a uh, fresh vibe to me so thank you for this uh, opportunity and hope it helps uh people out there who are watching and uh, any questions uh, just shoot up without any hesitation awesome. shout out to all the mentors your teammate yes. people who gave yes. feedback and, and the cats. all the youtube Don't them. yeah 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 <laughs> cool yeah we, maybe we should feature the cats in next video you <laughs> carrying her yeah i mean i just closed my door so that all of them otherwise you would have seen uh, some of them hopping <laughs> on the screen or on my hair or somewhere they are like a crazy bunch of uh, uh, we call them as meow villa and like they, they are that crazy members of that, those villa so yeah so i wouldn't be surprised if i see a cat hologram in your next video it was already there i said uh, the details uh, i mean just go back to the video now and you find the cat already there <laughs> awesome cool have a good rest of your sunday and see you in soon in future at some point yeah sure sure it would be my uh, lovely pleasure thank you my you once again for hosting me see ya see good you, night bye.